Hello and a really warm welcome to this uh, video in the series of armature rebuilding videos I've been doing recently. Thanks for looking in. Now since the last instalment I've got a rewound armature. I've managed to get the last two pole pieces wound and I've got the commutator on and the wires soldered. Now, if you look at the inset picture, the picture over the top of the video track, you can see just um, after I'd finished winding, wires sticking out. But yes, so there's my rewound armature. And here's a Triang one in comparison. So they're very, very similar, except mine's a much nicer colour with that yellow, I think. OK, well, probably be a good idea to uh, quickly do a resistance reading across a couple of pole pieces. If you remember, I've done that in previous videos. Now we know mine, if you saw the last video, you know mine's gonna be a little bit higher because my initial winding was an ohm or two more than Triang, but let's have a look. Okay, so here's the original, oh, it's just slipped off. Here's the original armature, eight, 7.9. Yep, that's what we've recorded in the past. So I'll just put that safe out the way. Now we know mine's going to be a little bit higher, so let's just get that on. So 9.7, and while it's on, let's just check the shaft. So we got no nasty short circuits. So now the windings are all soldered up. We've got a, a slight difference from the Triang one, but as I said in the last video, I'm not going to worry about that. The type of um, joint, I don't know whether it's a Delta style of winding. I've been reading up on it a bit as opposed to the star type, but um, anyway, I'm really pleased with how that armature is looking. So it's time now to see if we can get it running. Um, I'm going to attempt to get the armature back in the motor bogey. I'm not going to have time in this video to get the motor bogey running around the track. There's a few other challenges, but let's see if we can get the motor spinning. Now, there's a few challenges on this bogey. The, one of the bearings is held in with a tie strap. There is one traction magnet, one has been lost, the magnesian magnet. I have found another clip, so that's good. The felt rings are missing off the bearings. Um, but we're just gonna see if we can put it back together and get a result from this rewound armature. Now I'm just making some little spacer washers here because these worms, they've been filed and adjusted and um, I don't even know whether they're original but they're slightly short. Um, the worm is normally used to control end float on the armature and that places the worm slightly too far over the axle. So I'm going to put a couple of washers each end and the other thing is if I try and put this in I don't know whether the armature originally came from a class 37 or 31 but the shaft it fits fine but it sticks out too far that end. I'm gonna to have to cut a little bit off. And I think as I've shown in previous videos, um, it's had quite a life, this armature. If you look at the end of the shaft, you can see file marks and where worms have been taken on and off and, and stuff, but we're not gonna worry about that. So we have got some slightly damaged worms. We've got a few challenges, but we like challenges here on this channel and I don't think we're going to have any problem getting this back together. It's just going to be whether my rewinding is good enough. So let's keep um, the video going. You keep watching because I promise by the end of it, we'll have some electricity going into this motor and um, we'll see whether we get a nicely spinning armature shaft or not. But right now I need to just push these worms on and start getting the armature built up. Now, just before I do that, I've just remembered I've got a slight update on my 3D winding machine. Let's put it into view. And I got these bearings. They were called secondhand bearings used, but they don't really feel very used. They're lovely and smooth. And unbelievably, they were just over two pounds. And that included a bit of postage, so giveaway really. And look how beautifully that spins, that yoke. So I'm going to carry on with this machine. I've just stuck one of my rolls of wire in there to simulate um, a spacer. But I think what I need to do is get it mounted onto a baseboard and see whether I can get some sort of hand cranking mechanism in there. 
and then we'll see whether it's going to be useful. It's going to be an interesting thing, whatever, but I'm definitely sticking with it. But right now, I want to get this, um, this chassis, I want to get it all assembled, apart from the wheels, remagnetized, and then we're going to put some power into it. Right, first job, let's get this armature built up. Okay, well, I've successfully pressed the first worm onto the armature shaft. You can see the, the centre part of the armature nicely lined up with the chassis. And hopefully you can see down by the end of the worm two spacer washers that I've made just to move the uh, worm slightly nearer to the armature, which means it'll mesh with the gears nicely. So I do indeed have one end assembled and I'm happy. So what remains now is just to get this end assembled and then I'm just going to take a slither off this shaft, probably two to three millimetres because it's sticking out too far. Now, if you look at the picture I've just put over the top of the video track, that's just how I'm pushing the worms on. You can use a piece of tube. I've just found a couple of nuts and press them on with a small vise. But it's going back together. So in a second, hopefully, the whole armature and the two bearings will be squared up in this chassis and we'll take a look at it then. Gosh, well, that took me a bit longer than I thought. Now, just there. I'll just is the little bit of armature shaft I've trimmed off. So let's see. You can see now we haven't got too much sticking out. And the armature's in, the worms are on, the new spacers are in, to that end, to that end, two clips to hold the bearings, and look at this. Spinning really nicely. I've got minimum end flow, but it's just a little bit. And when there's oil on there, I think that's going to spin great and be nice and quiet. So I'm very happy, the armature's in. So it will have to come out again because I need to just put the magnet in and I'll remagnetize that. I won't bother showing that this time. I've shown it countless times in previous videos using the remagnetizer. And then I'll get the brush holder on. So we're nearly there. So when I come back, it'll be time to put some voltage into this armature. I can't wait. Okay, folks, well, I'm just going to adjust the camera now. Hopefully get the controller and the motor bogey in shot. This is what I've put a, still got my piece of paper here. Right, this is what we've been aiming for for the last few weeks. I've got my power. I hardly dare touch this control, but here we go. Oh. Okay, I've just thought now I haven't varnished this armature, so I shouldn't really rev it up, I don't suppose. So I'll put it on slow. Oh dear, a little bit of the oil is starting to come out of the bearings, but anyway, it's going to be running. I need to varnish these windings to hold them in place, but can you see the armature in there? Just going to try and hold it more securely let me just switch the power off hopefully you can see the yellow of the armature and put it back on yeah i mustn't rev it up too much but hardly any sparking from the brushes it's going to be really really interesting when i get that on the layout and see how it goes with some wheels in Probably going to take a little bit of running in but my goodness what an excellent conclusion to this armature winding series i'm so thrilled with that i do hope you can see the armature in there and the brushes but it's running quite quietly quite nicely a little bit of work to do before we can run it around the railway though wheels need to be cleaned the worm wheels need to be fettled there's a little bit of vibration, but I think as it beds into the bearings, it'll probably get a bit quieter. So I wonder how this will behave up against a normal triang armature. So what we'll do, hopefully, 
and see if we can do a comparison on the main layout. But for now, I need to thank you again for all the excellent comments that I've had through this armature winding series. And lots of great ideas and suggestions. I appreciate all of them. But for me, it's just nice to be able to say that I've managed to hand wind my own armature. This is Steve's actually. So he will be getting it back at some point. But I've been able to hand wind an armature and turn it from something that was virtually no use to anybody into an operating motor. So there we are. Makes a bit more noise now it's resting on the table and it's vibrating away. But it's not too bad. Well, I'm sorry it's not running around the layout in this video. I thought it would be, but it definitely will be next time. So that's when I'll see you up at the Super 4 main layout, testing out this refurbished power bogey. So for now, I'll leave you with this motor running and say goodbye. <laughs>